If you have a close look at these watches on their dials, you can see that it's nearly 11 o'clock. And I've been contemplating a video because a lot of you guys have been asking me to compare these two watches, the Tudor Black Bay 58 and the Seiko Limited Edition SLA 043. It's a Grand Seiko, it's a beautiful heritage Tudor, they both are fantastic watches, but this is here for a reason as well. And I've got to share a story with you, but basically the same day that I purchased this watch, I was wearing this on my wrist. And that same exact day, an hour later, I went to the Seiko boutique and I picked up this watch from Repair. And the story goes like this. I was wearing this, I walked into an AD and I said, look, I wanna buy a Tudor Black Bay 58. Do you have one in blue on bracelet? The gentleman said, yes, put it on, tried it. I've been looking at getting this watch for the past year. You guys have seen the video. I did a review on it. Love the watch. It's got a few design flaws for me that have stopped me from purchasing it. But in the end, after a year, I thought, you know what? I want the watch. It's the watch that I actually want. It's a beautiful little piece. I overlooked the design flaws. So. To cut a long story short, I bought this watch whilst wearing this. I walked out of the AD with this in my hand and you know what? I put it in the box, walked away. I wasn't joyful, I wasn't happy, I wasn't disinterested, but at the same time, I got what I wanted, period. So I put this watch aside, put it in the box. I walked up to the Seiko boutique and I ended up picking this up. You see, this was in repair for about a month or two and I finally picked it up and as soon as the lady at the repair shop gave it to me, I took it out of the box and I couldn't stop looking at it. And there was so much joy, so much excitement in my heart regarding this watch and yet I had no emotions for the Tudor. I got this from repair and I couldn't stop looking at this. This was the watch that I was looking at all the time. So what does this mean? That I'm gonna flip the Tudor? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of it? Absolutely not. It took me a whole year to decide to get the Tudor. I made my mind up in the end, I do want the watch, but the Tudor gives me a completely different feeling of satisfaction than what the Seiko does. Just wanted to share that because sometimes you can purchase a watch that you, you don't even have any feelings for, but you desire the watch, and that's what's happened with the Tudor. But let's move away from all that, guys. You guys wanted me to compare these, what I think is a better alternative or what's, what's a better watch. And look, they're both great. Honestly, these watches are both great, but I've got a list of 10 things that I wanna put down for these watches and I gave them a rating out of 10. And at the end of the day, the Seiko and the Tudor rated so highly, there was nothing between them. And I'll share that with you guys. So first off the bat, I wanted to talk about wearability. And in wearability, I rate the Tudor as a 9.5 out of 10. A beautiful wrist experience. And that was one of the key factors that over the past year, gee, I just gotta get this watch. It's built well, it fits well, I've gotta get it. Whereas the Seiko on the other hand, it's 39 and a bit. The specs say 39.9 to that bezel. I measure 39.5, the case is a tad smaller. So they're roughly the same size watch. The only difference is the Seiko is a little bit on a thicker side. So up to the box sapphire crystal, we're looking at just around 14 mil, but I measure 12.6 from the bottom to the actual bezel. So it's neither here nor there. They pretty much sit very similar. That, I've got to give the Tudor a, a few extra marks. So 9.5 for the Tudor, eight out of 10 for the Seiko, as far as wearability. Now, when it comes to case finishing, these watches are great, they're fantastic. I know that that comes out of the Grand Seiko factory. I've done a video on it, it's exceptional. So, look, it's been two months, guys, and this thing here, it's a 10 out of 10. I can't see a mark on it, it's brilliant. I've been wearing it literally every day, it's brilliant. Now, coming to the Tudor, I've given it a nine out of 10. And the reason I've given it a nine out of 10 is because the finishing is great. However, I've worn this 10% of the time as compared to that. And there's already marks on this. There's little fine scratches on the high polished where I actually wind it. So, although the finishing is great, it's susceptible to scratches. And I've had a few Omegas that have been similar to this, that you just, where did I scratch it? I've been wearing this thing in the house. Oh my goodness, this this Seiko, I've been wearing everywhere and there's not a mark on it. I've wear, worn this everywhere. Jobs, in the house, out of the house, 
uh, going out to, to clubs with uh, friends, having a drink. I've worn this everywhere. So there's a huge difference in as far as how the cases have behaved. I've really babied this watch and I've not this, and this has got a few marks on it. So I've rated this as a nine out of 10 and I've rated this as a 10 out of 10 in case finishing. Now, when it comes to the crystals, I love both crystals. They're both sapphire, they're both boxed sapphires. They look great. There's a, just the right amount of distortion at the edges of the crystal, which I love. But with the actual Tudor, to me, it's a little bit milky. It doesn't look as clear and the clarity is not crystal clear as the Seiko. That seems to be spectacular. Whereas the Tudor looks a little bit on the milky side. So in saying that, I've rated this as an 8.5 out of 10 and I've rated the Seiko as a nine out of 10. So exceptional crystals, really good look on both of them. Half a point between the two. Now the loom <laughs> and the loom, they both got green loom when they glow in the dark. and. Look, I'm not going to go on the color because they both would have benefited, I think, maybe from Blue Loom. Move on from that. But I think as far as brightness is concerned and long lasting, Seiko kills it. Seriously kills it. The Tudor's Loom is good and I give it an 8 out of 10. But the Seiko is just brighter. It lasts longer. It's a 9.5 out of 10. Really well done. Next cab off the rank is the movements. And the movements on these are both exceptional. The Tudor offers fantastic specs from 70 hours power reserve. It's a strong workhorse, and you know what? This has been running at plus one second per day since I bought it, so that's exceptional. Whereas the Seiko offers 50 hours of power reserve, and it, it was not regulated straight out of the factory, and that's a bit of a bummer. But taking this to my watchmaker, he kept it for about 10 minutes, and all of a sudden, it's been just over two months, and this watch has been running at zero. I'm wearing it, I'm wearing it, I'm taking it off the wrist, I'm wearing it. It hasn't lost, it hasn't gained. If I'm critical, it's gained literally half a second in two months. That's spectacular. But I'm not gonna judge it on performance after regulation, I'm gonna judge it on what comes out of the factory. And what comes out of the factory, that's a nine and a half out of 10, that's an eight out of 10. It just would have been great if these were just regulated straight out because that's spectacular, that is brilliant. Moving on, value for money. When it comes to value for money, for me, that's one of the best value luxury watches on the market today. I give that a nine out of 10. And the only reason I give it a, look, basically it's got a bracelet, it's got a great movement, fantastic solid build, a wonderful brand with great history. I really can't fault it when it comes to value for money. At the price that these come in at retail, they're brilliant. With the Seiko, I got a rate at six out of 10. And the reason I give it six out of 10 is, not that the watch is not good, I think you're overpaying. You know, the retail price that this comes in, you're getting two rubber straps and a cardboard box. Nice, nothing special, but the watch itself, in saying that, the watch itself is a great brand with a long history, a super solid movement, and probably the one of the biggest gripes is the fact that this is limited to 1,700 pieces worldwide. That's why the price is so expensive. So it would have been great if that was just a standard retail version. You'd probably be pretty much along the same price point as what you're getting in the Tudor. So value for money, I give it to the Tudor. Now, when it comes to time reading, when I've got these watches on my wrist and I look down to check out the time, what do I rate them? And as far as legibility, as far as ease of use, nine out of 10, nine out of 10. There's no difference. I've experienced them both long enough on the wrist to know they're easy to read in any lighting situations, dark environments, sunny environments, shade, not an issue. They're both pretty much on par. I've had more legible watches and that's why I've given them nine out of 10. Now the bezel actions on these watches is very, very interesting because the Tudor, to me, pretty much one of the best 60 click bezels you can get. It's, it's buttery. For those who have the Black Bay 58, they'll know that the feeling of this is absolutely buttery. It's beautiful. It's exactly how a 60 click bezel should be. I love it. So absolutely spot on. I'll give it a nine out of 10. Nah, you know what? I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10. That's fantastic. When it comes to the Seiko, again, sublime experience. It's a Seiko. You know it feels like a Seiko, but it's more refined. It's so much more refined and dampened. It's very finesse. And even with lining up on this particular model, there it is, spot on. It's absolutely perfect. But there is one gripe I have with the Seiko bezel. There's the slightest amount of back play. Big difference from the Tudor. 
So because of that, because of that subtle backplay, I'll downgrade this to a nine out of 10. That's a 10 out of 10, that's a nine out of 10. Next factor is what I call the wow factor. And the reason I call it the wow factor because having wrist time on these watches, <laughs> I've noticed a very, very interesting observation from people that are not watch geeks, people that are not into watches. Everyone loves this. I've been in meetings with professionals, with CEOs, photographing their and they're looking at this watch and thinking, my goodness. They won't say anything about it, but they're looking at my wrist and thinking, there's something special there. And even my wife's commented saying, honey, that's a fantastic looking watch. I said, isn't it? So it seems to capture the light really, really well. So in saying that, I've given this a nine out of 10. Now, wow factor of the Tudor, no one's noticed it. No one has noticed it. I've worn it on the bracelet. I've worn it on an Artem strap. I've worn it on a NATO. No one has paid attention to it. And look, it's probably a good thing. It's probably understated. And I like that about that watch. I know how good the quality is. I know how good the movement, how good the footprint is. That's great. I'm giving this a seven out of 10. So it's a shame. I love the watch. Others might find they're boring, but who cares? At the end of the day, it's what I feel. And the last criteria that I've had to rate is what's called strap changes, ease of use. And when it comes to the Tudor, there's no drilled lugs. It's extremely easy to scratch the back of the case because of that. And changing over several straps on the Tudor, I've found that that's exactly what's happened. Even using proper tools, it, it is what it is. It's going to happen. So seven out of 10 because of strap changes, you're going to have a little bit, especially people who don't have the right tools, you're going to damage that watch at the rear end it's normal. Where it comes to the Seiko, there's not a mark on this. I've changed several straps on this from, from NATO's to sailcloth straps, to mesh, to leather, to rubber, you name it. I've put so many straps on this over the last two months, there's not a mark on it. And one of the main factors for that is the fact that it's got drilled lugs. That's fantastic. And the other factor is that this accepts fat spring bars. It came with fat spring bars. So Whatever strap I take out, I'll put the fat spring bars in the actual strap. It fits, it gives you a reassurance of security and quality. So in saying all that, I have to give this a seven out of 10. I have to give this a 10 out of 10. So adding all these numbers up guys, it really it comes down to 86.5, 87.5 out of 100. Does that mean that that's a better watch? No. I love that watch, I love that watch, but they're very different in different ways. One wins in one area, one wins in another. There's no perfect watch, we know this, but love both of them. And I just wanna share lastly, guys, a lot of the people have said, oh, Pete, you know, you're not, you're gonna flip this, you know, because of this, because you love this so much, and, and I do, I absolutely adore this watch. I think everything about this is spectacular. Everyone's been saying, oh, you're gonna flip it. Guys, <laughs> I didn't spend a year making a decision to buy a watch so I can flip it. I really carefully consider this one. Normally I buy a watch just like that. I, I've been looking at this, I love it, I buy it. This particular, that's actually what happened with this. It was just the spur of the moment because Artem sent me a strap, so I went and got a blue watch. And I'm not a blue watch guy, I really am not. But after having this, I thought, man, this is exceptional. This has just ticked all the emotional boxes. This thing's got a soul. <laughs> For some reason, this watch and this watch, they seem to have a soul. They seem to be speaking to me. And if you can find a watch that speaks to you personally on that personal level, that's a watch that's a keeper. And that's what this is. Does that take anything away from the Tudor? Not at all. I know what I got. I know why I purchased it. I know its purpose. Love it, but in a completely different way. So I hope you enjoy that, guys. Let me know your thoughts. If you've got any of these watches, um, I just like speaking about watches regarding how emotive what they do to me as a collector, as a hobbyist. At the end of the day, uh, this hobby is meant to make you happy. If you're out there to make money and flip watches, good for you. If you're out there to make a, a collection that speaks to you on a personal level, again, good for you. It's a personalized thing. I don't, I'm not here to judge anybody. We're here to basically enjoy this journey of watch collecting, trying, buying, flipping, keeping whatever it is whatever whatever tickles your fancy that's great for me i'm very very pleased with these two watches never never been a blue fan ever period and uh now i've got two blue watches in my collection along with the rest so 
I want to thank you guys for inspiring me to actually say do do a comparison review of these because you know what I found that very interesting myself so thanks again and we'll see you all in the next video